Howdy, folks. I'm the luxurious, luscious Lemon Lynx. I'm Amber. And here's some Reddit that does not involve Lynx. All right, folks. Our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for suggesting that my younger sister move out of the house so I can move my future newborn into my mom's house? About two years ago, my ex-girlfriend and I, a 29-year-old male, broke up and I had to move into my mom's house with my two other siblings, a 19-year-old female and a 12-year-old male. I have 50-50 custody of my son, who's three, and he currently sleeps upstairs in the spare bedroom. I convinced my mom to move my younger sister into the other upstairs bedroom since I like the game in my spare time and I wouldn't want to wake up my mom and my stepdad due to my video games being too loud. Well, about a month ago, I found out that my one night stand is pregnant with my kid. She wants nothing to do with it, and I said that I would take on the responsibility of raising another child. She agreed to keep the baby to full term, and I would help pay for every medical appointment throughout the pregnancy. I realized that I can't put my future newborn in my kid's room since my kid is going through a phase where he'll wake up and cry profusely throughout the night. And the bedroom I have is full of my gaming setup, so there's no room for a crib. And I suggested that my sister could move out to our grandparents' house about 10 minutes away. My mom argued that my sister shouldn't have to move out because she pays her fair share of rent, and I commented back that I want my newborn kid to have a safe house to come home to. I also said that my sister would have quite the environment since my grandparents are frequent travelers and it's close to a bus stop so she can go to college. So am I the jerk here? I love my sister but in this case the newborn baby will come first and it would be a good idea since my sister is planning on living on her own in a few years time and she will get to know what it's like to have her own in a safe environment. All right folks what do you think? Jerk or not the jerk? Yes, you're the jerk. OP, you are a 29-year-old adult, soon to be father to two children. What is preventing you, if you don't want to move out your gaming stuff to put a crib in your room, what is preventing you from getting a place with your kids? Like, this is your mom's house. You do. It sounds like you're, like, taking over all the... You're going to have, like, three <laughs> of the bedrooms in your mom's house. And, like, in, you, this is your sibling's house, too. Like, you don't just get to dictate who lives in the house because you want spaces for your kids and you don't want to move your gaming stuff. Yeah, I think the easiest solution here is to move your gaming stuff. And because it sounds like you have a separate gaming room. Well, it sounds like his bedroom is full of gaming stuff to a point where he can't fit a crib in it. So I really think that this is just one of those situations where it's unfortunate. Yeah, OP, that you do have another child coming on and on their way and you don't have a lot of room. But in certain cases, sacrifices have to be made. And with another child, I don't know how you're going to have a lot of time for caring playing video games with caring for the kids and especially two kids right a three and a toddler so unless your mom is doing like a bulk of the child care which, which i'm maybe a little she concerned is, about in this situation either the mom or the siblings or something mm -hmm. then it seems like you're going to have a lot less time on your hands to care for a brand new newborn so while i can understand the frustration that op probably feels here with not having enough room these are his decisions and he has to suffer the consequences so to speak and i mean i know, i think like there's a lot of unfortunate stuff because like yeah it's hard to raise a kid on your own and it's hard to be a single father the, his attitude here like basically it sounds like well i'm prioritizing my kid over my sister and it's like this isn't your mom's kid this is your kid like your sister is your mom's kid and she should be her priority and equal c says you're the jerk are you being real you typed this out posted it and thought yep there's nothing wrong with my 29 year old but moving into my parents house moving my toddler in and then not using protection in a one night stand and like the hero dad that i am must bring that kid into my parents house have my own game set up so I can't put him in my room and try to kick my barely adult sister out who's 10 years younger than me. I really hope this is rage bait, but either way, if the gaming is that important to you, how do you have a job? Do you do your share of chores, take care of the toddler, and still have time to take care of a newborn in the future too? I'd like to know. You're the jerk again, in case you have forgotten. 
And OP replies, it's a tough job to do everything that you mentioned, but I do have a family to help me every now and again. My mom offers to pick up my son after his daycare is finished when I have to pick up extra shift for work. And equal C says, so how are you going to take care of a newborn as well? Also, do you pay at least as much rent as your sister? Actually, you should be paying quite a bit more because you have your son there too. Plus, he has his own room. And OP replies, I pay $700 a month. I believe she pays less than me. So OP does pay rent and OP does seem to take care of their child a lot. And uh, it just seems like it is a difficult situation. I mean, $700 a month in rent is still quite a bit of money. So it does sound like they're at least contributing. All right, folks, our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for leaving the restaurant when my fiance asked me to pay for dinner that I didn't even know about? Ever since the wedding planning phase started, my fiance, a 33-year-old male, Michael, would go and eat out at restaurants, and some of them tend to be unreasonably expensive, and expect me to pay since he's paying for the wedding. I had no choice but to do as he asked since he's putting his money on the wedding. However, he's also invited people and still expects me to pay for them as well. I did the math and I told him how much I've spent in the last couple of months on him and his family at the restaurant, but he replied with, whatever number you have, I'm paying triple for the wedding, so please, no comparison. I would ask for receipts. Mm -hmm. Honestly, this would hurt me, but I couldn't take it anymore, especially with how often he tends to go out lately. Last week, he called me to go meet him at X restaurant because he and his family wanted to consult me about a few things for the wedding. I arrived and saw his mom and dad and cousins there. I took a seat. Then we had a coffee and talked for an hour. Then the bill came and I was counting on paying for the coffee that everyone had, but I was confused when I read the cost. I thought that the staff must have made a mistake, but Michael said that there was no mistake and that the bill was more than expected because he and his family had dinner before I even got there. I was shocked and I looked at him and I said that I don't agree to pay for the family's dinner and he said that this wasn't the plan originally, but he and his family got hungry while they were waiting for me. I literally took 15 minutes to get there after his call. So they decided to eat. Coincidentally, no one brought enough money with them and he used this as evidence that dinner wasn't planned, just a cup of coffee. He suggested that I pay for dinner and his family would pay for their coffee as compromise, but I refused to pay for either of the coffee or dinner, only my coffee. Michael started begging and his mom said that I treated her like dirt after she took the time to come and discuss my wedding. I got up and I walked out. He blew up my phone with calls and texts and then sent a long voice message berating me for walking and putting him and his family in the situation. He went on about how much he sacrificed to be able to pay for the wedding and called me petty and selfish for refusing to pay for dinner. His family were still upset with me and he's not speaking to me. Even about the wedding, am I the jerk? All right, folks blessing or not blessing <laughs> that he's not speaking to op anymore yeah well op i think you did the right thing but you need to keep walking like just walk out of this relationship he is using this to manipulate you yeah you know, you want to know how he can save money on a wedding at this point in time by not having a wedding yeah <laughs> you do him a favor and stop having him plan this wedding and then he won't have to deal with the expenses of it anymore. Like none of this is reasonable. He is taking you for a ride. Like at this point in time, like just the whole attitude and that's the audacity of his mom to be like, you're, I went to all this trouble to come out here and discuss your wedding with you. Why is his family planning your wedding? Why aren't like, I mean, maybe you're really busy, but like this would be like the bride and groom planning, not his entire family. Yeah, I found that part pretty strange it seems like op should be sitting down and planning the wedding with everyone else it's almost like he's taken over the wedding mm -hmm. and the wedding planning and maybe this is something that he likes and op just doesn't enjoy that aspect of it and that's fine if that's the case but it still seems pretty awful that he's going out of his way to basically be like i can i'm paying more than whatever you're paying for for dinners and stuff like that and you should you should be punished because i'm being generous and paying for this wedding yeah well and that's not the way a good partner acts and it seems like he's just trying to get things out of you and like i'm wondering if he's even like 
paying for things like is he just trying to take you for a ride there's, there's something very fishy going on here with the whole situation it doesn't sound like he likes you it sounds like he's just using you as a piggy bank and i'm kind of wondering if the wedding will ever happen yeah i mean that's certainly a good question i think that there is that should be in the back of op's mind and i think that op you really should ask for receipts and say that look with how much you're spending on this wedding i would like to see how much you're spending because our finances are going to be combined soon i think it's reasonable for me to know how much is being put into this wedding and i don't think that's an unreasonable request canceling it at this point in time is probably the best course of action like this mm -hmm. does not seem like a good situation there are red flags everywhere yeah he is trying to hold finances over your head already and yep. when you get married is it going to still be well i paid for your wedding you need to continue to pay more, pay up. I paid for this wedding. Why aren't you paying more for X, Y, and Z? Yeah. How long is this going to get hold, held over your head? Like he's just going to drain you dry. Yeah. So yeah, OP, I don't think that you're in the wrong in this situation. I think any reasonable person would look at a dinner that you weren't invited to and be like, why would I pay for this dinner? Yeah, like they didn't finish this in 15 minutes. They definitely ordered it and ate it, had the dishes cleared and then called you so yeah. they could try and pull one over on you. Yeah, maybe they forgot their wallets, but only because they are so used to not paying for anything for these dinners. Mm -hmm. And then they called you as a strategic way of getting bailed out of their poor decisions. Well, I think they just intended Opie to pay all along. And yeah. they knew if they didn't have, they thought if they didn't have their wallets, oh, there's no way Opie wouldn't pay. Yeah. And then another question that should come to Opie's mind is if they were planning on dinner before they got there, and it sounds like they were, why did they not want to spend time with Opie and talk with them and you know, have a good time with them at dinner. Why are they excluding OP from dinner? Because OP is just their cash cow. Yeah, and that's really what this seems like. So I would definitely deeply consider this relationship OP. So anyhow, take care and good luck. And Sorgi says, not the jerk. Are you sure that you want or should be marrying this man? He's extremely controlling and manipulative. You're seeing a glimpse of your future where he'll continue to hold over your head that he paid for the wedding and that you owe him for the expenses. His family clearly supports this terrible and entitled behavior. There's no way that they all ordered waited for their food to be prepared and brought out and ate everything and had the plates cleared away in 15 minutes between you them calling you and you arriving. The gaslighting is extreme. He is and they are treating you like an indentured servant rather than a fiance and future wife. Please don't marry into this family. I think that's a good comment. Mm -hmm. Very good comment. All right, folks. And our next letter is an update, if you would believe it. So yesterday we had this post about this uh, father-in-law who ate muffins that were made with breast milk. And OP had told him this and he made some other creepy comments about this. And now we have some more information. Update. I asked my husband what he thought I was mad about. He was in the room but he was on the other side and occupied with a baby. And he said that he didn't realize that his dad actually ate the muffin. He thought that I was mad because he was messing with them. He also didn't remember the group chat incident, but agreed that both incidents together is creepy. I called my mother-in-law to quote, clear the air. And she revealed that father-in-law has always been very interested in lactation. And she actually only fed my husband for four months and always behind a locked door. Apparently he moved jobs after a woman complained that he kept intruding on her pumping in a designated space in the office. I've told them that father-in-law is not welcome around me and have asked for the key to our place back. I share the concerns about him tampering with my milk and contaminating it, and also that if his own wife wanted him locked out, then I'm entitled to that too. The comment that hit my husband was the one about father-in-law getting off for years on the memory of eating gross baby muffins. Husband said that he won't be able to look father-in-law in the eye again. All right, folks, what do you think of that update? I mean, I think it's about what I expected was yeah. going on here. The, the added, like, his, what, what really frustrates me, though, is that 
everyone has kind of swept this under the lower rug. Like his yeah. wife was feeding her child behind closed doors yeah. and didn't bother to give Opie a heads up that, oh, hey, by the way, my husband's a creep. Oh, yeah. I mean, why is mother-in-law not being like, oh, by the way. <laughs> he literally, like they say he left his job. He was probably like forced to leave for this sexual harassment. Like, let's call it what it is. Like, yeah, yeah. This is sexual harassment. What he's doing is not good. And he needs to people need to be warned of his behavior because this is really just gross on his part and op is being subjected to something that's terribly gross and i i just i feel so bad for them yeah i don't think that op is in the wrong i think this has illuminated things if anything to make me further along the lines of saying that op is not in the wrong but mother-in-law is in the wrong here. Yeah, I just feel so bad that OP was thrust into the situation and that people knew. Like, this wasn't something that came out of nowhere. People were aware mm -hmm. that he has these creepy uh, tendencies and no one was like, oh, by the way, OP, this dude is a creep. Yeah. So that's my thoughts. Anyhow, take care and good luck. All right, folks, it is tea time. Grab your beverages of choice. I've got some tea right here and Amber... She's got a joke. What is the strongest creature in the sea? I can tell you what the strongest creature in the sea is because I know, personally know, the strongest creature in the sea. So, let me tell you about a voyage I had once. We, we were sailing on the ocean blue, as we do, and one day we encountered a kraken and this kraken decided that it wanted to sink our ship and the ship was rocking back and forth and everything like that and so we thought that we were doomed the planks were creaking and the boards were cracking and then out of nowhere uh, a uh, very strong dolphin jumps on top of the deck and then challenges the kraken to an arm wrestling match and says that if I beat you then you need to let this ship go and uh, this this is how we were freed from the Kraken and the sea the sea the thing is this right this dolphin is no ordinary dolphin we saved that dolphin earlier so basically what happened is that dolphin was trapped on an island it was there was just like so so many issues there right and we, we saved them we rescued it and it came back and rescued us against the Kraken so that dolphin believe it or not, is the strongest creature in the sea. We called him Bob. I would like to see a dolphin and a kraken in an arm wrestling match. Yeah, it was pretty impressive. It, there was just lightning, fire, red lightning across the skies, and uh, just uh, there was a hurricane in the background. We were like in the eye of the hurricane, just like everything was all around us. It was impressive. Very impressive. A muscle. A muscle? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, talk talk to the dolphin. <laughs> and I have liquor spice. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Tuesday, spelled T-W-O. Amber, we need some kind of moral guidance. And please have it involve an arm wrestling dolphin. To OP in the second story. You would probably be better off spending your money betting on an arm wrestling match between a kraken and a dolphin than blowing it on your hopefully ex fiance. Yeah, that's for sure. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you all tomorrow. Bye. And also, Morgan wasn't feeling very well, so I hope you feel better, Morgan. Yes, feel better. All right, folks, our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for suggesting that my younger sister move out of the house so that I can move in my new future born new future born <laughs> what is, what is, that's not word order word order matters here 